This is a message to all the cosplayers and a warning about Jim Snick, Jim Logan of Snick Shop. There are dozens of pages on Google with other people sharing their stories. He called me names and told me that I was going to the back of the line. It's not wrong if I only scam some customers, not all of them. I recently got scammed by a customer and prop maker in LA. I don't normally make videos like this, but I want to share my story to hopefully prevent this from happening to anyone else. My name is Michael, and some of you might know me from the Batman Beyond fan film that I'm working on now. And it's actually on this project where I got scammed. But here's where it gets crazy. As I did more research on the person who scammed me, I uncovered a whole history of scams from this person. And that's the worst part. Over the past 12 plus years, he's stolen money from dozens, if not hundreds of people all over the place and he keeps getting away with it. So this isn't a video that I want to make, but it has been months and months of stress and wasted time trying to get my money back. And unfortunately, it's led to nothing, even through the legal system. So I wanna make this video for a few reasons. One, I wanna share my story of how I got scammed. Two, I wanna let other victims share their stories. And three, I just wanna spread awareness so that hopefully this never ever happens again to someone else. So, where did this all begin? We were early in pre-production for Batman Beyond, and I was starting to think about the costumes and props that we would need. I came across Jim Logan props on Instagram, and the items that he showcased looked pretty decent. I reached out to him via email at the end of November 2022, just to see if he had time and if he'd be interested in helping. So he replied with a fairly normal and friendly response, asking about the items that I would need and the budget that we had. And then the next few months, I was focused on casting and stunts, art department, logistics, just things for the actual film. And I didn't circle back to props and costumes until February of 2023. So on February 1st, I emailed him again and I showed him the exact props that I wanted to commission. Jim replied asking for more info and what deadline that I would need the items by. So I gave him a concise list of items that I would need and I specified the schedule. I said that I would need these by the end of March and that's because we were gonna film in mid-April. On Thursday, February 9th, Jim replied with a quote for the items and he even threw in an extra version of the prop at no charge just to help out. The cost for this came out to be $1,350. He said that the schedule was tight but he could make it happen if he got the order in by the end of this week. So I wanted to expedite the process, so I replied on the same day to confirm all the information. He asked for uh, my information for billing, which I provided, and then he sent me an invoice along with his Zelle account information. He said he would need to start by Monday. So again, I immediately sent overpayment on Zelle. I know I shouldn't have done that, but I wanted to get started because there were so many things going on. His Zelle account was under a different name, and at the time I was curious, but he did confirm that the name was accurate. Later on, of course, I discovered that Jim Logan's just his public stage name, which is why the Zelle is under his different real name. And yeah, he confirmed receipt on February 9th, so this is all within the same day still. So now I continue working on other parts of the film, and I assume that Jim's going to be professional and work on the props in the meantime. If you work in any sort of creative space, whether it's film or graphic design, uh, commercials, website design, you know it's pretty standard for a client to expect occasional check-ins just to see how your progress is going. So I gave him a few weeks and I didn't say anything because I was busy, but I would occasionally check in. On March 20th, I kindly emailed asking how progress is going as I had not seen anything yet after a whole month. He replied on March 22nd saying, Sorry, was away for my 40th B-Day, back in the shop tomorrow, and we'll be crunching away. Cool. I reply on March 24th, wishing him a happy birthday, and I ask if he has a rough ETA of when things will be ready. No reply. So I ask on March 29th, again, if the props will be ready by the end of this week, since, remember, the original deadline was the end of March, and March is wrapping up. No reply. I reached out again on April 2nd, now past the deadline. 
And I asked the props again, hey, are they gonna be ready this week? As we need time for our actors and our stunt team to try out the props before we actually go on set. He finally replies on that day saying, it's been an incredibly complex month with all of the wrestling stuff. You're definitely behind. I can throw in extra copies as a thank you for your patience. Does April 15th work? By wrestling, he means his kind of side gig that he does where he wants to be a wrestler. Now keep in mind, April 15th is when we start shooting. And luckily the scenes that we needed those specific props is the week after, but it's still insanely close and I'm running out of time and preoccupied with many other tasks at the moment. So I just say it's fine. I ask in my reply if he can send even just one prop, like that's all we need to get started with. But of course, there's no reply. I reach out again on April 8th, desperate as I ask for updates, no reply. So we film that weekend of April 15 and there's still no word from Jim. Now on April 17, I send two emails. At this point, I'm beyond concerned and I don't actually expect anything. Like I, I suspect that I'm getting scammed. I ask once more and I even highlight how I'm gonna have to pay double, right? Cause I already paid him and I'm gonna have to pay someone else now for the new props. There's still no reply. So we're now five days before the shoot and I have no props. It's an insanely stressful time. Filmmaking by itself is already stressful. And now on top of that, I have to worry about the scammer and how we have no props. So I rush and I reach out to as many prop makers as I can in the area. And what's funny is that when I'm talking to these people and, and they ask me like, who's a scammer out of curiosity? I mentioned Jim Logan and pretty much all of them say like, yup, we've heard of this guy. He has a bad reputation in the prop industry. Wow. Okay. Just in time for the film, we're able to scrape together some props and they don't quite fit the original sort of design and vision, but it is what it is. And we're gonna have to spend some more time in visual effects later to kind of clean things up. But we finished shooting the film and I'm exhausted. So I spent a few days just recovering. After the chaos, I settled down. And by this time I had done more digging on Jim Logan. And this is where I uncovered that whole history of scams that I mentioned. There are dozens of pages on Google with other people sharing their stories. And this dates back like 12 plus years. Um, there's big cosplayers, small cosplayers. It's just an endless amount of victims and they all have receipts. That's the crazy part. There's so many people showing screenshots of emails, uh, texts, video recordings, phone recordings that they had with the gym. And it's the same fashion as always. They commission work from him. He agrees to do it and then he ghosts them. Occasionally he'll deliver some half-baked product just to give him enough credibility online but for the rest of the people, he scams and keeps their money. And not only that, his attitude towards his customers is awful. He always gets aggressive and rude, and he just insults people if you call him out. We'll go over more of these cases in detail next, but just look at a few of them quickly. There was a Facebook group post from Adrian who showed his scam interaction. Adrian ordered a vest from a Halloween 2020 sale for $344.90 and paid for the item. Later on, Adrian asked kindly about the status of the order, which is a perfectly reasonable question. And Jim replied, telling him to shut up. Adrian replies, stunned by the rudeness. He mentions how Jim claimed the orders would ship in time for Halloween, but now it's past that date. And Adrian is still being perfectly polite and fair. Adrian has to even call Jim. At first, the call doesn't lead to anything, but Jim assures him that the vest is in progress. Adrian then files a chargeback for the order, so Jim goes off angrily, de denying that he ever scams people, and demands that Adrian remove his chargeback or he'll threaten to accuse Adrian of being the scammer. Eventually, Jim does ship some poorly made vest over, so Adrian cancels the chargeback. But you can see how Jim continues talking to his customers. According to Jim, if he has over 100 customers and two of them cause him problems because they don't want to be scammed, then he's okay. It's simple math, as he says, right? It's not wrong if I only scam some customers, not all of them. Jim's rant keeps going on for far too long, but I do find it funny how he says he can't threaten people physically anymore because it's 2020, but that he would if it were the old days. Number two. In the past, Jim had used an ex-girlfriend's PayPal account to receive money from customers. 
That way, when any trouble happened, the issues and the debt would go to her instead of him. Um, he, of course, just ran with the wind, leaving her to clean up his mess. And I believe that she said that up to this day, she's still basically paying for his debts. One of the biggest cases was back in 2014 when a cosplayer, I Like Comics 2, got scammed and she ended up spreading the word on blogs and websites and articles. And you can just look this up online. You can find all the sources yourself, but long story short, she paid $500 for a Ghost Rider helmet and she never received it. A Bleeding Cool article from 2014 also had just a whole list of people sharing their interactions with him. Some of the comments say, Andy, I've lived with him before and also done business. I've had a horrible experience with him on multiple occasions and if anyone wants to know my story, I would be more than happy to share it. Wolfram Creative says, The Red Hood Mask is a reworked recast from GCFX Hero Villain Mask. I'm the designer, sculptor, and mold maker for the original piece. I recognize my work when I see it. It's insane people are so bold, they have to steal someone else's work. Forrest says, To my dismay, I recommended him to a friend and he cheated my friend out of $700. Victoria, sadly, my friend and I ordered from him as well, but we're international purchases and we're not sure what we can do to get our money back at this point. Identity shift. I paid Jim the $500 and was given a eight week ETA. I was new to the whole PayPal thing and didn't realize there was only a 45 day limit to disputes. So I gave him time to finish other deadlines. And again, it's not just the scamming that sucks. It's the attitude and aggression that he shows. Here's a screenshot of him saying some rude and homophobic comments to a customer, which I'm not gonna repeat. The funny thing is, unlike some scammers who just disappear, Jim has so much of an ego and narcissistic personality that he can't help but argue back at people. He even admits online that he could not get orders done, his words, not mine. Look at this comment from him where he admits that he takes more orders than he can handle and he doesn't fulfill them. Okay, so, why don't you just refund the money for the people that you don't deliver to, right? By this point, I have the whole scoop on him, so I know that I've been scammed and will not be getting any items. Because he hasn't replied to my past four emails, I try to reach out to him via other means. I try to DM him on Instagram. I try calling his phone. He picks up once, but he says he can't hear me, and he just hangs out. I ask around and people say that he only makes time for big creators and it's why you'll see some bigger cosplayers and bigger channels that still represent his work because he makes props for them for cheap. So I try texting him as if I'm from a larger channel and of course he replies to that confirming my suspicions. On May 4th I email him firmly stating that as I never received my items I would like a refund for my money. Suddenly he has time to reply again when I mention a refund. He admits that he was delayed, saying, I'm very sorry for the delay in my response and in the work. I've been dealing with some personal stuff and that is on me. So I firmly state that I understand that people can have personal issues, but it doesn't change the fact that I made an order and nothing was delivered. There were four emails before this and he had ignored them. He then replies with his normal MO. He goes on attack mode and starts playing victim. He makes up an excuse about going back and forth to New Jersey between jobs because his mother is on her deathbed. Which we could give him the benefit of the doubt, but based on how he talks to other customers, it's probably just a lie. He'll play the empathy route, saying it's private and personal, but when you look at messages with other customers, he'll do the same thing every time and just play the victim with excuses about his health, his family, his work. I've been watching other YouTubers and influencers talk about times that they got scammed, and in so many of their cases, scammers do the same thing like they're following a playbook. Whenever someone confronts them, they just start making excuses about health and injuries, family issues, so it's really hard to trust any of it. So while he was busy, there's so much proof on his social media that during the months of March and April, he was doing a wrestling event at his studio. And remember, that's when he was supposed to be working on my props. He was posting multiple times a week, sometimes multiple times a day, so clearly he must not have been that busy. In his email, he'll say he never missed a film deadline, but then in the same email he so easily admits that he missed my deadline, so it goes to show how easily he says things just for the sake of saying things, and it's really hard to trust what he says at all. 
I reply back curtly and ask for my refund still. He replies and deflects as usual. At this point you can understand my frustration because he doesn't ever acknowledge the actual refund. He talks about everything else except giving customers back their refund. It's the same thing he does with every victim. I send him one last email asking for my refund, and then he goes to me. He blocks me on Instagram, I think he blocks my phone number, so I can't call or text him, and yet he runs away. Since then, I have been dealing with a small claims case, but the system's incredibly difficult and frustrating, and it's already cost me a lot of extra time and money just to try to get him to court. Just as I was about to serve my papers to him to his studio in LA, he actually fled the scene and moved out of state. Which again is his normal thing. Every time he picks up too much heat somewhere, he has to leave and move to a new state. Looking at posts from the past, he may have been in New Jersey years ago, then he moved to Florida and scammed people there for a while. He got a name for himself as a scammer among the different comic cons and conventions, and so he moved to LA where he's been for the past two years up until just a few weeks ago when he moved out of state again. Another victim I've been talking to, Joe, also has a small claims case against him and he successfully served his papers to Jim just weeks ago. And then Jim moved out of his studio right after that, so it looks pretty suspicious. The sad part is that all this could have been so avoidable if he would simply refund his customers. It's, it's that simple. And I don't think anyone will have the real numbers on this, but if we just kind of estimate and look at the public cases because there are probably more victims who have not spoken up online. But let's just say he scams 10 people a year and on average each order is $500. That's still $5,000 a year. And he's been doing this for 12 plus years. So it's a lot of money that he's stolen. And even then the $500 average is pretty low. Again, my case was $1,350 and you've seen on other people's comments that they've lost out on $700 or $800. Now, I'm still trying to get my money back somehow, but it's unlikely that it's ever gonna happen. Money's tight, and there's the strikes going on right now, which makes work even more difficult. So things are tough enough, and it's awful to have to deal with being scammed. Over the past few weeks though, I have been talking to many other victims who've come forth, and they've also been scammed by Jim Logan recently. So I wanna give a chance to some of these other victims to share their stories. So first off, we have the case with cosplayer I Like Comics 2 in 2014. Marlene shared her story on her blog, which several articles picked up afterwards. She discovered that Jim even has an arrest record in the past for theft. Marlene began talking to Jim in April about a Ghost Rider helmet. He says the helmet would be $400, and then after some customization with adding flames, it'd be another $100. She says she's okay with paying up front because, at the time, he was associated with some bigger projects, including Project Lex, Nerdist, Pat and the Sun, and others. Fast forward four months, I've seen no progress photos and begin to grow concerned. So I shoot him a Facebook message in September and receive no response. I send another message to the personal email that he himself provided and still no response. I message him a third time to his personal Facebook two weeks before the show, nothing. Though he continues to post actively across all social media, make last minute props for his personal friends, make new non-commissioned props to sell on his Etsy, and even attend events and photo shoots. Here are some of the examples of the messages she sent him trying to get his attention. So after six months, he ignores her until she finally makes her blog post. And surprise, surprise, he responds the day after angrily and says, hello, I did not get a message to your concern and you jumped to a little article. My lawyer is gonna have a field day with that which is hilarious considering how many times she followed up with him. He even gets removed from the Geeky Awards afterwards, and more people begin sharing their reviews on Etsy about getting scammed. He then tries to put himself above the community by saying he's no longer taking orders for cosplays. As he writes, if you're a cosplayer, you are irrelevant to my work, which is funny because to this day, he's still trying to sell items to cosplay. Back in 2013, a cosplayer, Chris Vespia, also did a video sharing his experience with Jim. It's up on his YouTube channel, so feel free to check out the full-length video there, but I'll play a few clips from it just to summarize. Back then, Jim used a different name, Snicked Shop, so you'll hear that throughout his video. This is a message to all the cosplayers and a warning about Jim Snicked, uh, Jim Logan of Snicked Shop. And uh, just a warning to everybody out there, don't do business with this man. 
Um, he's a con man and uh, obviously a thief and a fraud. Um, and here's my story. About two and a half, almost two and a half months ago, I ordered an arm gauntlet from Mr. Logan. And it was for my Iron Man cosplay. Everybody knows that I'm the Iron King of Las Vegas. And uh, I needed it for a, a Comic-Con in Las Vegas, the Las Vegas Comic Expo. And well, Mr. Logan informed me that there would be no problem in having the gauntlet delivered by the end of September, which was when the con actually took place. And uh, unfortunately, when the time came, he wasn't finished with the gauntlet at all. And so panic set in, as many of you might uh, realize that that might happen. So now, Mr. Logan said that he was sorry that uh, he was unable to finish the gauntlet. And as a result, he was going to make sure that my gauntlet was done. And these are all quotes from him. He said, your gauntlet will be done uh, either by Halloween or in the very least it will be done by November 2nd, which is the upcoming library con here in Las Vegas. It is now one day after Halloween and one day before the Comic Con at the library. I have not seen the gauntlet. It did not arrive for Halloween. Um, and last night Pepper and I contacted Mr. Logan as we've been trying to contact him all week. And finally, we got a hold of him and he started saying that, well, he's got a lot of orders and he, he thinks we need to go with a plan B. He's not gonna be able to make it. He's not gonna build the gauntlet on time and that uh, he's been extremely busy and he apologizes. Uh, well, I don't even think he really apologized. He just said, uh, you know, I've got other people with other things on order, so. And I said, well, I understand you have other orders, but that's not our concern. I mean, you have to remember, rule number one is a deal's a deal. And I delivered. I paid him well over $200 for the product, and I, I expect to have it. Uh, one of the reasons why he has, doesn't have it done is he went to a Comic-Con himself, somewhere in Florida or something. If you have work that needs to be done, then you have no business gallivanting across the, the, the damn country, doing other things instead of taking care of business, like promised to not only myself, but all these other people that are waiting on their orders. Um, so I told him that, and uh, he immediately became um, uh, aggressive, rude, defensive. He sent me a message of, via, via Facebook, me and Pepper. Um, he was very insulting. He actually offended me by making an insinu insinuation. He said, I don't know, some people, they use these things for other purposes, if you know what I mean. I think he was making like a sexual innuendo, but whatever it was, it was, it was extremely rude and, and I felt like it was vulgar. This is the one thing out of everything that I've said that sticks well with Jim Logan of Snick Shop, folks. He is unprofessional. And as it is right now, guys, as we stand, I don't have my refund. I don't have my product. Around the 2015-2016 time period, this was when Jim was doing something super shady and was using an ex-girlfriend's PayPal for his business. I spoke to her and she shared how it was a traumatic time and he was very manipulative and aggressive to her afterwards. She states, here is money he racked up using my cards and PayPal and money I lost he never paid back when disputes were opened. Also pictured of the hole he punched in the hotel room wall. So after he would scam customers, they would dispute the payments on PayPal. But of course the debt went to her and she had to pay back people over the next few years. Whenever she would ask him to pay back the money that he owed her, he would say that he'd pay her back, but of course it never happened. Over time, the emails and text messages from him got pretty insulting. Here's a few screenshots, and I won't say out aloud these parts, but you can read it for yourself. As always, he'll claim that she's just another hater like others online that just want to get back at him for no reason, and he can't fathom any possible reason why so many people for over a decade would have issues with him. He'll always play the victim and try to manipulate other people online, but of course he feels no remorse and just continues doing it to others. At the end of August, another victim named Joe messaged Jim asking about the Flashpoint Batsuit. It'd be $300 for the set and $25 shipping, so $325 total. Adding the guards and accessories is an extra $450, so the total now becomes $750 with shipping. Joe ends up opting for just the $325 package at first, and sends over payment on Cash App. Jim confirms receipt of the money, and he promises a 12-week turnaround time for the items. 
Fast forward to November 8th. Joe gives a heads up to Jim that he's moving to somewhere else and provides his new address. There's no reply from Jim, so he waits a bit more and emails on January 4th, to which Jim replied the next day, making excuses about his social media messages being out of control and how he's down an employee. Which, we don't even know if this is true. He's made claims over the years that he has had an employee, but many people suspect that it's actually just him replying on different account names. Jim makes up some mumbo jumbo about having no order number because he paid directly, but everyone who's been scammed has been paying directly, so we don't even know if he has order numbers and it could all just be a front. Joe asks about the extra cost for the full suit again as he's tempted to get more items. Jim says on January 19th that his order is cast up and mostly assembled awaiting final details. So you would think that it would be done in the next few weeks at most. Joe continues asking about other items and Jim even quotes a Deathstroke armor for $2,000 which hopefully no one has ever gotten scammed for that much by him. Jim then makes a very bold claim saying that if you ordered another suit, it would not slow down your order but it would be best if we set a deadline which is just hilarious considering how he can't even get the first order out on time. Joe settles on getting the additional pieces to the original Batsuit he ordered, and Jim strikes him a deal to get it for $400 instead of $450. Jim mentions paying with Zell, and I want to note that it's around this time that he started opting for Zell and Cash App as his preferred payment methods. PayPal, he's most likely been banned from at this point, and with Zell and Cash App, it's really hard to dispute payments, so it makes it perfect for Jim to scam people with. So Joe pays the $400 on Zelle and Jim confirms that he received the money. Time passes and Joe emails on February 8th to check in, citing that he'd love to have the armor for an event. Jim says, I will make sure you have it in time. Famous last words as Joe doesn't hear back from Jim for a while. He emails on March 8th to check in, no reply. Through this time, Joe remains friendly and positive, giving supportive replies to Jim's Instagram stories over the next few months. Now on March 17, Joe sends another friendly message asking about his order. Jim finally replies on March 18 saying, We did cast it, but I'm out of town for my B-Day right now. Hmm, that seems pretty familiar, right? Because he gave the same excuse to me during my case. Regardless, Joe wishes him a happy birthday, and Jim says that his order will go out on the next run in a week. Jim shares that he got legit funding behind his skills, getting 100k from a company, and I can't help but think of what sorry company just got scammed by Jim to fund his studio. Once again, Jim talks about how his other works hurt his cosplay clients, which is something we've seen him say since the early 2000s. Joe doesn't hear from Jim again for a while, so he switches back to email on April 30th to check in. No reply. He emails for the last time on May 15th, still kindly asking about the suit. No reply, and by now he knows he's been scammed by Jim, and to this day, he has still not received his order or a refund for the money he paid. My name is Joe Simpson, and I run the Instagram account vjimlogan.isascammer. I got scammed by Jim Logan's shop with his usual play. I reached out to him to place an order. He took my money and then completely ignored me until I was upset enough to say something. Then he claimed that I was being an asshole and that I was moved to the back of the line. I never heard from him again. All of our interactions are documented on my Instagram account. At the start of September 2022, I reached out to Jim to place a custom order for some of his armor pieces because he had been posting some sob stories about how he might lose his studio due to COVID and needed business. I placed an order for about $650, and he told me that I could expect an 8 to 10 week turnaround. I said thank you, then waited for 12 weeks to reach out to him again and ask for an update. Around the middle of December, I tried again and again, received no response. Once January came around, I reached out again and told him that if I didn't hear back, I would need to take legal action, which I didn't want to do. I also commented publicly on some of his posts where he was still trying to sell custom armor, despite my order never being filled. This finally prompted him to reply to my messages. His response, when it finally came, was to tell me that I would not be able to accomplish anything by taking legal action, 
and that I could expect my order at the end of January, now a full two months past the original delivery date. I told him that I would appreciate being kept in the loop if the dates were going to change, and he never replied. I checked in with him two weeks later to make sure that the order was on track. No response. I tried again at the end of the month when he promised the order would be ready. No response. Finally, once February came, I told him that I was tired of his lack of response or professionalism and that I would be taking him to small claims court. This finally did get a response, and his responses were that what I would come to learn are his usual responses when people get tired of him scamming them. That he does make the armors, and that I would receive it whenever he decided he wanted to send it. Then, he once again stopped replying. When I followed up again in March, he called me names and told me that I was going to the back of the line. His complete lack of professionalism and follow through was too much for me at this point. So I began the process of taking the case to small claims court. In the course of preparing for my case, I came to find resources dating back to 2013, detailing how Jim had used this exact same scam on dozens, if not hundreds of other people. I also found a forum with over 100 pages of people coming forward where I decided to try to join up to get our voices heard. Several of us had pending court cases against David, so the scammer packed up all of his things and left town virtually overnight. After I had served him my case papers and before the next set of papers could be served to him only weeks later, he never appeared for our hearing. David is a liar and a scammer who has clearly demonstrated that he will continue to run this scam with no fear of repercussion, who will lie and cheat and then skip town once people begin to get upset with him. He hides behind big name studios like Bat in the Sun, names that he has actually produced props for to use as a smokescreen. I don't believe that I will ever get my money or my order back at this point, but if we can prevent even one person from getting scammed by this liar, I will be happy. On October 20th, 2022, Cash messages Jim on Instagram asking about the V1 Soldier Boy vest. Jim replies, citing that he actually just made the Soldier Boy mold today. Turnaround time is 8 to 12 weeks. And side note, it's funny how he keeps changing his mind for what the turnaround time actually is. He quotes the price to be $400 plus shipping for the vest, shoulders, and belt, and $200 for the shield. Cash asks for a January 10th deadline, and Jim says Jan 10 is fine. Jim doesn't want to use Etsy, which has more protections for customers, so he pushes for Cash to use Cash App instead. With the $50 shipping, the total comes out to be $700. Cash sends the money over, and Jim confirms that he received it all on October 20th. Cash messages on November 30th to follow up on progress and to wish him a happy Thanksgiving. No reply. He messages again on December 2nd to follow up, and there's still no reply. He messages again on December 10th to follow up on progress, and Jim gives a curt reply, shooting for Jan 10 like you asked. So the year passes and Cash messages on January 5th asking about progress again, no reply. He messages on January 10th, which was the agreed upon deadline, but there's still no reply. He messages again on January 13th, now past the deadline to ask about the timeline. Jim finally replies on January 13th saying, Sorry I haven't been on here, should be ready by the end of the month. I like how Jim is always okay with him being late on orders. The idea of a deadline means nothing to him and he can just work at whatever timeline is convenient for himself. So the end of the month comes and of course there's still no shipment. Cash messages on February 5th following up again but there's no reply. He messages again on February 9th asking about status and Jim gives a short reply awaiting detail. That's it. Gotta love how professional and respectful Jim is to his customers. Another three weeks pass and Cash messages on February 21st, more firmly. He brings up how they agreed to January 10th, which then got pushed to the end of January, and now it's pushing to March. In the meantime, Jim has been posting on his social media about getting other armors done. Cash states that he needs the order this week or he wants his money back. Now Jim has time to reply on February 22nd. It's the same way of talking to customers, 
He doesn't address the refund and just acts rudely saying, yes, I deactivated Facebook and ran to Mexico wearing a soldier boy costume. Yes, there are multiple armors posted. You think you're my only customer? One of those is a joke. Cash replies upset about Jim being rude, summarizing their whole situation of how he paid Jim for an agreed upon deadline, but Jim has shown him no updates on the order at all. Jim replies in classic fashion saying, oh man, that's a long message. I'm being rude because you are so self-centered that you are somehow offended by any vest I post because you weren't first. We have 100 clients for vests at any given time. I just want to pause again to think about how absurd Jim is. If there's anyone out there who still defends Jim, because I know that unfortunately, there still are some fans who are either too naive or just don't care, how can you look at these situations and not see how ridiculous Jim's behavior is? Going back to the case, Cash messages asking for a phone number to discuss the situation. Jim ignores him and by the end of the night, Cash has come across Jim's true history of being a scammer. Jim finally replies when his past is called out. He goes on a crazy rant that is too long to say aloud so you can pause to read his absurd reply. One highlight is when he says, you're gonna to have to talk to your mommy about going first and before everyone else, that's not my department. Real professional Jim. Cash then asks for a refund and Jim replies with a yawning emoji. So Cash talks about contacting the Better Business Bureau, Consumer Affairs and other agencies. Jim continues to troll and not take anything seriously. He even taunts Cash saying, the money was paid on Cash App, which also has a no refund policy. So it goes to show how Jim is very much aware of using Cash App and Zelle to avoid refund disputes. There are many more cases out there and this video could literally go on for hours. So I'll stop here, but I do recommend researching online yourself to find out more. It's all out there as public information. So to close out this video, if you are a cosplayer or you're looking for props or costumes for your project, beware of Jim Logan. He also runs a physical studio sometimes. So that's something to watch out for as well. As for myself and the countless other victims, I don't think we'll ever get our money back. It's just stolen money and it's gone in the wind and that sucks. But if we can prevent this from happening to anyone else in the future, then that's good enough. I also hope this can inspire some content creators out there who are still representing him and still buying things from him to take a stand and not turn a blind eye to something that's affected so many people in the community. I really don't understand how you can be so selfish and cold to just ignore what happens and support someone who clearly manipulates and scams people for a living. I know how hard it is to create things on a budget. I myself am in those same shoes of creating projects with limited resources, but it's not an excuse to stoop down low to work with someone like Jim. And if you need costumes or props, just ask around because there are so many other costumers and prop makers out there who are honest and fair and can give you better craftsmanship too. So please share this video and just get the word out to everyone. And of course, shameless plug for myself, if you are a fan of Batman, go check out the Batman Beyond film we're working on now, and please support it when it comes out. Thank you.